Top Gun is being sued, and so is American Airlines, while Envoy is throwing fat stacks at the flight deck. That and more aviation news on this episode of Taking Off. Hi everyone, Dan Milliken coming to you today from my home and not the studio. Well, it seems like I have finally caught the COVID bug, uh, one of the last people to actually get it. I've traveled all over the world uh, the last two years and I've never caught COVID, but finally got it from my family that was isolating, go figure. All right, we're gonna talk uh, Top Gun lawsuit and some other aviation news, but before we do that, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsors. They're all pilots. Colton Mortgage, Residential Mortgage at coltontakingoff.com and Flying Eyes. Use the Taking Off all caps one word discount code and get 10% off. And Marshall Protective Services. I really hope that you can support us by using our sponsors. They're great people and great pilots. And holy cow, guys, we're approaching 500 videos on our channel. Wow. Thank you all for watching and supporting what we do here at Taking Off. Okay, first up, for those flying into Air Venture this year, the NOTAM is now up at the EAA site. Last year's big change of adding waypoints to the Fisk arrival was a big hit, and those will continue this year. Uh, and if you're planning on flying in, make sure you read the NOTAM all how many ever pages of it and follow the instructions and if you're going to go to air venture look us up this year christy is not in training and will be there with myself and a crew we might even do some on location in the hangar recordings at the flying eyes booth we're still working out the details but you know there will be uh, at least meet and greets and things like that and we'd love to see you and hopefully this year a nine-year-old girl will get her 10th birthday wish to see a Harrier at Air Venture. Her precious letter to the director of Air Venture is making the rounds of social media. And we'll try to keep you up to date to see if she gets her birthday wish. It looks like her letter has made it to the desk of some of the very uh, top important people. So here's to hoping that we'll see a Harrier at Air Venture 2022. All right. Before we talk Top Gun lawsuit, the FAA has announced the next window for hiring air traffic controllers. It's scheduled for June 24th through June 27th. The pay is really quite decent, but you've got to be under the age of 31 on July 27th. Uh, you have to pass uh, medical, you have to pass security background checks, be a U.S. citizen, and uh, be willing to relocate to an FAA facility and all that kind of stuff. More info at faa.gov slash B ATC. Also, rocking the professional pilot world this morning, Envoy, a regional carrier for American, sent an announcement to all their pilots about a huge pay increase. And by huge, I mean huge. Looking at the current pay scale compared to what's coming up, Oh, it's about doubling a 90 to 100 percent pay increase. <laughs> Forget the four or five percent cost of living adjustment. The struggle for the regionals in keeping pilots could change, and this will inspire a whole lot more student pilots. You know, just six years ago when I was getting my private, my instructor was hoping to you know get his hours and get to a regional where he would then maybe make thirty thousand if he was lucky. In six short years, times have changed. This dream pay increase should take effect uh, July 1st is what they're telling me if this is actually signed by the powers of B and not just someone hacking the employee mail list. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be uh, something? But if you see a big smile on your friendly neighborhood Envoy pilot today, uh, you'll know why. Okay, let's get to the Top Gun lawsuit. For the person out there that's been living under a rock, a brief recap. In the mid-80s, a cheesy but popular movie with more continuity gas and Swiss cheese has holes helped propel Tom Cruise into superstardom. 
And two years ago, when our aviation community heard that a sequel was about to launch, they quickly lampooned the film that 35 years later, Pete Maverick Mitchell would still be flying fighters off the of carrier decks. Then the trailer started dropping, and the aviation community made a heroic impossible turn back to the runway and embraced the upcoming release like no other aviation film. And the movie did not disappoint most of us. Critics and fans alike love it. But one party that doesn't love it is the family of the person who wrote the original piece, the article the movie was inspired by. You see, in my day job, I work in film and television, having made five feature films in the past and have dealt with movie clearances, rights, and such. Here's my take. In 1983, Ehud Yone wrote an article entitled Top Guns, and the storyline for the movie was based on it. And how this usually works is that the development department for a studio is scouring the news and media and upcoming book releases for the next potential big film. A D person sees or reads something like this and floats it upstairs. And if it gets some thumbs up, lawyers drop contracts and film rights are sought after for the property. And usually the film rights are acquired for a length of time to give the studio a chance to make a movie happen. And they call this an option. As a note, very few options ever make it to the completed movie level. But this one did. So the movie was completed and the studio had the film rights. Here's where it gets interesting. In the U.S. copyright law, there's a section, 203, that allows the creators a second chance at the pie. It allows that after 35 years, the creator can basically send a notice of termination of the rights and resell those rights. And what happened is that this movie, according to Paramount, was substantially completed before Yone's heirs sent the notice of termination. Paramount's position is that it was too late, that in the copyright law it allows for prior derivative works. Yone's estate position is that Paramount ignored the termination letter and proceeded with the release without owning the original story rights. The studios have huge legal departments that dot every I and cross every T. And when you're making a movie like this, there's pages and pages and pages of deliverables as far as contracts. And I have no doubt they looked at this and felt that they could easily win. But I also have no doubt that they're going to have to spend hundreds of thousands, if not seven figures, to defend against the Yonate estate. And I bet this gets settled after both sides do enough saber rattling and positioning. According to some of the attorneys weighing in, it's really a toss-up of who would win this one. But everyone agrees that Yone's will be getting a large check one way or the other. Okay, speaking of lawsuits, American Airlines is in the news. Arizona resident Michael Lowe boarded an American Airlines flight at DFW Airport in May of 2020. He took a selfie of himself he sent to his girlfriend on the plane. All well and good. Then a year later, while vacationing in New, New Mexico at a 4th of July party with his dog, someone called the police regarding a disturbance. And the police ran the guest's name through the database and, lo, popped up for a warrant. What followed was simply 17 days of hell for Lo, who spent all the time in the local jail at the height of the pandemic. And no one would tell him why. He got some special treatment as his pleas only seemed to antagonize local law enforcement who decided a strip search was in order complete with the bend over and cough. Even after being released on the 17th day and a long bus ride home to Arizona, he could still get no information from the DFW law enforcement, except that he had just missed another hearing. Finally, he got an attorney in the DFW area and began to unwind the mess. Back on that May day in 2020, someone shoplifted from one of the terminal shops. American Airlines reported the theft to DFW Air Pol Airport Police, who ordered American to send over surveillance footage and a passenger manifest. Apparently, their policy is to send over footage of everyone, but for some reason, they sent only one single passenger's picture, Michael Lowe, who had long hair that day compared to the buzz cut in the surveillance video. American Airlines fingered Lowe for the crime, and his life dramatically changed. Once his attorney showed the pictures, the case was immediately dropped, but his life has been dramatically impacted, and this is where I'm going to depart fact and move to opinion. What happened here was an incredible lack of investigation. A jumping to immediate conclusions because either the person was too lazy to follow best practices or just like the guy for the crime. For those that do any type of investigation, I've been seeing more and more a sloppy disregard for the process. Maybe whoever it was was at American had been jumping before and getting it right and being called a hero, but when you don't do the investigation procedure, and the few times you get it wrong, it can devastate people. 
just my opinion here, but whoever made that decision in May of 2020 should serve 17 days in the local lockup and not be told why. And for others out there who employ investigation as part of their job, please research, look at the angles, and avoid the trap of making factual statements based on one look or one source or, or your opinion. Do better, be better. Okay, in the spirit of being better, most of you are aware of the tragedy at the Stoll Drag recently that led to a tragic fatality. I'm working with Corey Robin to produce a video about how we can improve this exciting new growing sport and what he thinks can be done to make it safer. Look for that soon. Also, we'll continue to put out our UK aviation videos from the recent Flying Eyes tour. Christy and I got to fly gliders over Leicester in the next video, and look for that soon. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Don't forget our sponsors. We got Colton Mortgage, ColtonTakingOff.com. We got Flying Eyes. Use the discount code TAKINGOFF, all caps, one word, for 10% off, and Marshall Protective Services. That's the news for today, and we'll see you guys next time. Remember, superior judgment trumps superior skills. We'll see you later.